Hi, welcome to WeCDC. WeCDC is a weekly podcast uh, dealing with technology in and around the DC metro area. My name is Mason Rothman. And I'm Adam Simmons. This week, where are we coming from? We're shooting at the Upfar Hazy Center, I think I pronounced that right, here at the uh, Dulles Airport uh, in uh, Virginia, uh, near the Washington, D.C. area, of course. Sure, sure. Uh, Smithsonian. Absolutely, Smithsonian. Mm. It is really, literally right on the Dulles Airport property, so pretty close by a lot of places here. Uh, and definitely has to relate to technology because it shows the growth and inspiration and a lot of the sponsorships that a lot of the companies around this area have put into uh, with some of the equipment in here in the a past. A lot of the Beltway absolutely. Bandits have built a lot. Lockheed of Martin. Of the, yeah, a lot of the equipment uh, here. Raytheon, Boeing. Boeing, absolutely. They're all here. So uh, we have in the back here showing some overlays on the side while I'm talking during the video. Uh, a lot of satellites equipment here that they have showcased, a lot of history, Space Lab. Some of the primary uh, features, or at least some of the highlights you see at the museum, you'll soon notice right away. They have the USS Enterprise, the Space Shuttle. Uh, they also have the SR-71, the Enola Gay, which obviously dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Mason does a uh, brief ex expose on that one. And uh, a brief, brief little facts about the Enterprise. One. And uh, a brief, brief little fact, we went into space, but um, it was the flagship of the fleets, so actually introduction to the space shuttle history. This is great because we're about to end the space shuttle here yeah, pretty what soon. Yeah, we got one or two launches left, or one or two uh, flights, and then that's it, or how many, yeah. how many more? It's sad. Absolutely. It's sad. It's, uh, I don't know what else to say about it, right? So. But the Smithsonian bought it in 1977. In 1977. Absolutely. And, uh, but it, it now has its resting place here. Sure. Uh, the Smithsonian also, this particular museum was also the showcase in Transformers, where the, uh, this, you the know, SR the SR-71 here came to life. Obviously turned into, uh, into a uh, Decepticon. What was his name? Do you remember? I can't remember. What I cannot think of it offhand. It's yeah. killing me, actually, because I really do. He had the old Scottish accent, accent you know, and he yeah. was crusty, and he got up. Yeah. I, I do not recall, and I was should. Was he one of the primes, too? Is that what one of the deal was? He was in the movie, yeah, but right. he's... Uh, a retired prime. Yeah, <laughs> retired, uh, retired Decepticon. That's but right. this museum has a lot to offer. It does, definitely. And, and it's free. Yep, it is free, except for the fifteen dollars of parking that we had to pay to get in here. The downside, the fifteen dollars for parking. Uh, they also have an IMAX here, which runs about how much? Right? Uh, I think anywhere to fifteen to twenty dollars. Uh, I've seen a couple movies here. I've seen the the latest Star Trek movie, and yep. I also watched um, Transformers Two here. I actually watched uh, Superman Returns here back in the day, two thousand seven. I think it came out. Okay. So. Uh, but so it's and it's more a cool. true IMAX. It's it is. Not, yeah. It is. It's not one of those like oh, bigger screen theaters. This is a true half dome, so it's yeah. pretty cool to see the movies here. Uh, some more it was highlights. Nice to see Megan Fox on that large screen. I'm not going to lie to you. I bet this guy here. Yeah, she was. I was reaching out. <laughs> wanted it to be 3D, but it was 3D. Uh, we also have light, light tables from light, light tables from if you're a little oh, yeah. imagery school imagery uh, analysts yeah. like Mason and I are. Some old light tables they showcase. A lot of imagery satellites uh, they showcase as well. As long as some old imagery equipment from back in IDEX. the day. It could be, uh, what, 70s and 80s there? Yeah, they had the IDEX computers which went for a couple million a pop, but they were just basically a couple of screens that brought up images on them. Oh, absolutely. So this is a great place to look at history of technology, and we like to showcase that because it's also a great, pay great place to visit here in the D.C. region. Uh, what else do we want to Hi, Mason Rothman here. We're at the uh, Air and Space Museum uh, out by Dulles Airport in uh, lovely Virginia. And uh, what Adam just zoomed away from was the Enola Gay, which is a B-29 that was used during World War II uh, to drop an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, uh, Japan. Uh, that was one of two atomic bombs we, we dropped. They didn't get the message the first time uh, that we didn't want to fight anymore. Uh, so we dropped a second one at a later date uh, on Nagasaki, and that's uh, uh, when, when the, uh, the war uh, pretty much ended uh, with Japan. And some more aircraft that we actually have in the museum here is, uh, we have the Concord, which obviously you know retired a few years ago. The Concord, which obviously you know retired a few years ago. Uh, yeah, actually just broke uh, just over mock. Started coming back actually, that uh, Air France or yeah. British Airways. Well, past the, uh, you know how dangerous it appeared to be. Mm -hmm. It was actually one of the most expensive aircraft. That's the only why I'll, you have to have a lot of money to go on it. Tickets were expensive, 
yet again, what, you can get overseas in yeah. how, how fast? It was like uh, six hours or something like that? It, I don't know. Faster than that. But it, yeah, it was just blazing, blazing fast. Uh, maybe it was like a two to three hour flight. Yeah, either, either way, yeah, if you want to go over the ocean fast, that's And you had a lot go. of money. Absolutely. Yeah. But it was one of the most expensive. So that was cut due to budget constraints. And so was another bird here, the SR-71 was actually cut due to budget constraints because it was expensive to fly that bad boy. Yep, because they couldn't actually refuel that. They actually had to refuel that thing in the air as well because you had the initial flight to yep. get up there. But then, uh, because the way the aircraft was built, most of the fuel leaked out uh, mid-air, uh, because that's because when it broke up to high speeds, um, the uh, how how it actually contained the fuel would you know the, the heat would actually compress yeah, yeah. and seal it seal the tanks closed. This way, uh, it actually was more efficient and gas efficient when it went up to speed. And it's yeah. And the reason it was built uh, was because of the U-2 that was shot down with Gary Powers and. I think it was shot down with an SA-2 or an SA-3 missile, and it's odd because odd, they actually have one here, a Russian missile. So there's a little bit of history all coming together. So like you said, it was built because the SR-71 was fast enough to avoid those missiles. But it, then at a certain point, we had so many of these behind us as well. Oh, so the satellites. And it's just it was just a cost prohibitive. And we, at the same time, we recognized the U-2 and other flight platforms were a little bit cheaper. And Absolutely. Uh, it all comes down to there. money for us. Yeah, so. it's all about money. So. Hi, as we're closing today, the National Air and Space Museum closed at 6.30, and so we're uh, finishing up here, our summary. Yep, we're just kind of wrapping Mason, up. Mason, uh, how would you uh, talk about, hey, how, some of the business area, why it's so important, sure, the, the sure. history and the technology that we've viewed in the museum? Sure. So a lot of the money that, that, that powers the whole D.C. area is driven by a lot of these contract companies that, uh, that build some of the beautiful things uh, and the innovations that you've seen here today, you know, from your Lockheed Martins building your SR-71s, you know, to your boat building you know uh, several aircraft to uh, where are some of the other companies you got Lockheed you got Boeing you've got uh, McDonnell Douglas you've got uh, who else uh, I'm trying to think of any other uh, companies but there are just numerous numerous companies whether it's you know General Dynamics that builds a satellite processor to you know Northrop Grumman that builds a rocket yeah. um, you know it's to, to the, the agencies that sponsor them to sure, the, sure you know the uh, National Reconnaissance Office that is nearby they actually sponsored the Corona program so, uh, but billions of dollars uh, that, that just kind of trickle down throughout the United States to other locations. But the hub is here in the D.C. area, and a, a, a lot of the families and, and, and work environment around here are based on that whole contract community. Absolutely. So, uh, and that's very, very important. Uh, but it was a great day here. had had a lot of fun. This was only my uh, third time coming here. The only the other two times I just went and saw IMAX movies that Actually, we talked about you know, earlier. Same here. It's yeah. probably my third or fourth time myself. So it was it's really a, cool. It's a nice reminder of what's around. And and it looks like they're building the new part too because there was a big coming soon sign downstairs. Uh, yeah. so, so who knows? We may be back here in a future episode. Yeah, we might be back here in a future episode. Uh, so we're it, it, where we're sitting right now is this is actually the McDonald's upstairs. Uh, I'm having a diet coke and Adam's having a full fat coke and uh, we're just having a good time uh, up here. Uh, and closing out the day. The cool part about sitting in the McDonald's here, if you look out the window, you can see all the aircraft as they're approaching and flying into Dulles at like uh, low as, altitude. Uh, as you're looking out the window, because the audience can clearly yeah. turn their, woo, okay. Well, they got to come here. That's yeah. the whole point. You got to come here to the Air and Space Museum and check it out. So, um, but it was a good day overall, and, uh, and uh, we're glad that we could bring this experience Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. We'll see you next time. I'm Adam Simmons. And I'm Mason Rothman. This has been another episode of We See DC. Thanks for joining us.